Hi, I'm Mike, Program Director at PWR Steer. Welcome to the PWR Steer video series. Today, we're gonna do a basic rack and pinion installation, and this will cover the typical steps that would apply to most vehicles. While the vehicle is still at floor level, set the wheels straight and secure the steering wheel to prevent it from moving in any way. This is very important to prevent clock spring damage affecting the airbag operation. Here, we're using a holder to secure the steering wheel. Before we remove the rack and pinion unit, we need to flush the system. This is a good time to remove the power steering reservoir because it will need to be cleaned before you refill it. In a lot of cases, the reservoir cannot be cleaned correctly. Take a look at these cutaway examples. As you can see, the mesh in most cases cannot be cleaned. Power steering fluid gets contaminated as parts of your system slowly wear out. Things like bearings, the inside of hoses, gaskets, or seals will deposit tiny particles in your fluid. If the reservoir is contaminated, it will contaminate the system and shorten the life of the new replacement part. We'll do the job right and install a new reservoir. Fill the reservoir with the OEM recommended fluid. Next, we need to flush the system by disabling the engine from starting and disconnecting the return line to the pump. Crank the engine over, pushing the old contaminants out through the return line. Once you see clear power steering fluid flowing, reconnect the hose. The system has now been flushed, and you can see how critical this process is for flushing out the old contaminants. Just so you understand, there is a high pressure line and a low pressure line in the power steering system. The power steering pump sends the fluid to the power steering rack through one hose, a high pressure hose, and it returns to the power steering fluid reservoir through a second hose, a low pressure hose. The hose that sends the fluid back to the reservoir and pump is called the power steering return line. Some power steering systems incorporate a fluid cooler which is located on the low pressure side of the system. If a cooler is included, the return line runs from the steering gear to the cooler and from the rack and pinion unit to the reservoir. Remember that the power steering system is a closed loop system, and if the system is open in any way, air will get in. So whether you replace a hose, a pump, a rack and pinion unit, or a gearbox, there's going to be air entering the system. The idea is to get the air out as quickly as we can to prevent it from damaging the replacement part upon startup. Now that the system is flushed, we can remove the rack and pinion unit. Loosen the bolt to the steering shaft coupler. Then loosen the jam nuts on both tie rod ends. Disconnect the outer tie rod ends from the spindles, but leave them attached to the rack and pinion. In this application, we'll disconnect the sway bar mounts to help when removing the rack from the vehicle. Now, disconnect the pressure line and the return hoses and have a pan ready to catch the fluids. Now you're ready to remove the two main rack mounting bolts. Now you can remove the rack. Once the rack is removed, Compare it to the replacement part and make sure they are 100% identical. Some specific things to look for are the tie rods must be the same length, thread size, and pitch. The hydraulic connections must match in size and location. And the bushings must be the same size with the same spread. To start the installation, you need to make sure that the new rack is centered. To do this, you need to rotate the input shaft steering sector all the way in one direction. Then count how many turns it takes to turn it all the way in the other direction. Now, this rack took 2.8 turns. Now turn back 1.4 turns and the rack is now centered. Next, take a tape measure and measure the distance from the tie rods to the steering shaft, center to center. Mark down your measurement. You'll need to do this for both sides. 
This is a good time to replace each tie rod with a new one. Either way, install the tie rod to the correct measurement per side. This will help in getting close on alignment. And remember, anytime you change a rack, the vehicle will need to be aligned. Now that the tie rods are installed correctly, it's time to transfer any additional hydraulic lines and any brackets that did not come with the new rack. Make sure you clean and flush the old hydraulic lines to remove any debris that might be in the lines. Now you can install the additional hydraulic lines onto the new rack. Now the rack is ready to be put back onto the vehicle. Simply reverse all procedures to install the new rack. Here's a quick note. Use recommended torque specification for installation. Remember, with the steering wheel still locked in place, install the input shaft steering sector correctly. Do not attempt to move the steering wheel in any fashion to mate up to the rack and pinion. Once everything is reconnected, fill the reservoir with the proper fluid and bleed the system. It's always a good idea to check the owner's manual for the fluid specification. Now, before starting the engine, turn the wheel lock to lock 10 times. Refill the reservoir if needed. Then, start the engine and turn the wheels again lock to lock 10 times, checking the reservoir one last time and checking the system for leaks. Now vacuum bleed the system, and if everything looks good, the job is done. For more information on vacuum bleeding, check out our other videos. Let's do a quick recap. Check belts for cracks or oil contamination. Check hoses for leaks or wear and replace them if they are five years old or older. Inspect the power steering system and the suspension system. Always install a new remote reservoir if applicable. Flush the system with recommended fluid type. Compare the new product to the old product. Every part should be installed to factory torque specs. Vacuum bleed the system every time a line is open. When ordering a PWR rack and pinion unit, here is a guide for when outer tie rod ends are included. The suffix will always determine what's in the box. Any rack part number with a T suffix determines that the outer tie rods are included. For example, 42-2706T. Thanks for watching our PWR Steer video series, and please check out our other videos. And remember, our products are 100% new, 100% tested, engineered in Memphis, Tennessee.